Hello, and welcome to this lesson on Interactive Brokers Client Portal API. In this lesson, we will be discussing how to retrieve various scanner parameters and how to read the parameters list, along with how to make a request using those parameters. To begin, I can build out my initial framework as I have done before and prepare a scan params method. In this case, I will build out an endpoint variable and set it equal to iServer forward slash scanner forward slash params. This will return a list of parameters that we would have to reference for our market scanner. Then we can make a simple get request and build out our json.dumps method as we have done throughout the series. As an exception to the standard, we will actually be displaying our details a bit differently than normal. Let's create a variable param files and set it equal to the open method, and then in quotes, dot forward slash scanner params dot XML, and then an end quote. And then after a comma, and then in quotes, we will write letter W, and then our end parenthesis. What this means is that we will create a file using Python. I will be calling it scanner params dot XML and I will be writing to it based on the mode W. Now, I want to start iterating through my JSON inside my file. To do this, I will write for I in params underscore JSON, and then on an indented new line, simply write paramfiles.write, passing the argument I. Finally, I can move to an unindented line, and I will write param file dot close and then a set of parentheses. What this all means is that I will open a designated file and for each new content in the JSON response, I will write it into my new XML file. You are welcome to print this directly. However, given the amount of information returned and how frequently we may need to reference this information, it is often best to do so by writing it out to a file. If you would like to have peace of mind that our file write request was successful without referencing your directory, you may also want to print the params underscore rec dot status code value after closing our file. After running this code, while I won't have anything in my console, I can see in my folder that there is a new file. With our new file downloaded, we can make a new Python file to start our framework. We will come back to this new XML file in just a moment. I will jump into a new file, such as marketscanner.py. I can then build out my typical framework along with my method scanner request. With the framework of our file set, I will go ahead and set my endpoint variable to iServer forward slash scanner forward slash run. Now, for this request, we will need to use a JSON body. So I will go ahead with constructing that. I will call it scan underscore body and set it equal to a set of curly brackets for the array value. Inside these brackets, we will need to create a few fields, including instrument, location, type, and filter. With the body set for now, I will create a variable scan underscore rec to make a post request. Then I can set the URL to the base URL plus the endpoint, verify set to false, and then I will make a JSON field set to scan body. Then I will print the json.dumps variable when all is said and done. Jumping back to our XML file, we know what fields we need to look for. Let's start with the instrument and location fields to see what we'd like to work with. I know I want to work with stocks and I do not want to trade outside of the US. To find this, let's look under the location tree section. With how we exported the XML, we could see a range of display names discussing what we want, such as US stocks, US equities, and many more. The typical structure for the instrument field will be the, just the security type. So in our case, we will just use STK for stock. 
Looking right next to this, I can see the available locations that correspond with this. I trade the major exchanges, so I will use stock.us.major. However, if I traded pinks or on the OTC market, I could use stock.us.minor instead. And as always, we would encourage you to explore this document as much as possible to find what suits your needs. With instrument and location done, we next need the type. This will be the system interactive brokers will use to sort your scanner. All of the scanner types are conveniently located under the Scan Type List section. This section is broken up to display a human readable tag, display name, followed by the code, which is equivalent to what we'd enter into our scan body's type field, and then a list of instruments the scanner type works with. I think I will sort my list using the top percent gainers or top perk gain, though I would strongly encourage reading through the available offerings. With this built out, I would like to take another look at our marketscanner.py file. With our new values, I can make a very basic request. So in my case, I will set the instrument type equal to stock, the locations to stock US major, and the type to top percent gain. And then I will just leave my filter as an empty list. If I run this code, I will see a variety of return values that we can work with, and in a neat order from zero all the way to 49, including their contract information. We can finalize our lesson by discussing potential filters you will want to add to your request, as you may not want just the minimally sorted values. To find available filters, we will need to jump back to our XML file and jump to the instrument list section. Here, we could see a set of unique filters to a given security type. We can see these dictionaries are divided into display name, type, and filters, like before. I am still working with US stocks, and so I will just investigate the first return here. Looking at our filters section, we can see a wide range of values for US stocks alone. In addition to this section, we can also jump to the filter list section of the XML file. There will be a wide range that will include many common filter requests. In my case, I know I want to filter out my instrument price to an exact range. So I'll go ahead and jump down several lines until I see the price above filter. As you may have noticed, many of these filters are very similar to those available on Interactive Brokers, other programs like Client Portal and Trader Workstation. I want to filter my price range, so I'll be using the price above and price below filters. Having chosen my filters, I will go back to my scanner file and add these to my filter list. The way to add filters is rather straightforward. Within this list, each filter will be in its own array made by two curly brackets. Within there, we will include fields code and value. As an example, we will use a left bracket and then in quotes the word code, a colon, and now in quotes once again, price above. Then a comma followed by our other tag value in quotes, and then a colon, and then the integer 101. This means that we only want to filter our shown contracts with a price above. $101. Next, I will mirror this filter with code price below and set to a value of 110. This should now only return contracts between $101 and $110. It is important to note that with the inclusion of filtering in the mix, I may receive a reduced number of contracts or potentially none at all. This is typically a sign of aggressive filtering, which does not leave any contracts to match your parameters. This is not necessarily a problem, it just means that you might need to relax your scanner focus or potentially remove a few of your filters. But with that said, once we run this code, 
we should see a strong selection of contracts that match our filtered range that we can use for requesting market data or placing orders. Thank you for watching this lesson on market scanners in the Client Portal API. If you find this lesson helpful, please check out our other lessons in the Client Portal API tutorial series.